Good morning everyone. Let's talk PCOS and weight loss. Okay, let's start with a little backstory. And for me, my backstory is I was diagnosed with PCOS when I was around 19 years old, I believe. Um, and it's been, it's been a journey. I went from having periods so like up to a hundred days apart at my worst point to having pretty regular periods now and experiencing a lot of difficulty with just my health in general, my weight and like everything that comes along with that and now I'm getting to a point where I really want to you know get my health entirely like under control and unfortunately for PCOS a big part of that is like having a healthy weight and being within like the healthy part of the BMI scale and I don't remember the last time I've been in that um I at the start of this journey I weighed about 86 kilograms but my highest weight I was 95 kilograms and I definitely I wasn't comfortable with my body at that weight so I did drop some and then I just was like oh well this is fine but my goal eventually is to get to around 70 so I've got a little bit to go I never felt entirely comfortable sharing like my weight loss journey on the internet um, mostly for two reasons. One is that people will try and give you advice when I don't really want it. <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable with doing things the way I like and when people give me advice it's just more annoying than anything. And also because I see a lot of people say oh like don't talk about things until you actually have them and originally I was like oh yeah that makes sense but I know that losing weight with PCOS and just having PCOS in general can feel quite isolating and frustrating so I want to share my experiences and kind of you know let people know that they're not alone that this journey can suck but we can you know women with PCOS can lose weight and be okay with their bodies. I'm not going to go too in depth on anything today because I have another video planned later in the year to do kind of like a an update like a four month update or something like that i think and i will kind of go more into depth then but i'm just going to take you through like a general day where i'm focusing on my health my body all that all that fun stuff um but i don't film my breakfast because i get up like 7 a.m and then i don't want to vlog at 7 a.m who wants to vlog at 7 a.m but my breakfast i did take a picture and i had two pieces of sourdough some cottage cheese, a piece of bacon, and an apple, if I remember correctly. So that is just honestly what works for me. I like having a bigger breakfast and I like getting in like a decent amount of calories, you know, eating. I don't calorie count simply because I'm lazy, but I kind of like eyeball it. I'm like, yeah, that'll do. So I start with breakfast and I'm working through some water. That's a big problem of mine. I don't drink a lot of water, but I'm trying to get through four bottles uh, this one I have here is from Ikea, I believe, and it was like 500 milliliters or something. So I am going to have to get a bigger bottle, but that'll do for now. And then after I film this intro, I am going to go on a run. Okay, I won't call it a run because that's... So I'm not running. I'm probably going to do like a light jog mixed with walking. I'm not made for running, okay? I'm made for walking at like no incline at a consistent speed um so i am gonna try do like a light jog but we shall see how it goes okay this is new to me but i have successfully lost about four point something kilograms since i started so my my ideal target weight is within reach i just have to get there i'm also planning on joining a gym eventually in the next month or two especially before it gets way too cold to like go runs but i am going to start you know sharing my gym journey hopefully i have asked my husband to get a gym membership alongside me so we can both go um but yes i am this new phase of life with my health and my fitness as number one priority is it's fun it's it's going somewhere but yes i'm gonna go get ready go on my run and I will catch up with you at lunchtime I guess. 
Okay, before I go out, I'm gonna do a rundown of my little outfit today. Uh, this jacket, 20 euros from Dunn's. I have the like proper Lululemon aligned jacket, which was like a hundred and something ridiculous. This is 20 euros, it's absolutely fine. Uh, I got it in a size medium and the top, which I think is very cute. Uh, this is from Cotton On, I got it in Australia. And it's so nice and I really wish I got more of them when I was in Australia, but you know, too late now. And then the leggings, let me just turn around. My leggings are from Kmart in Australia. If you're American, people are like, you still have Kmart? We did in Australia. Um, the leggings are from Kmart and they're a size 14, I think. So. Very cute, but it's pretty cold. So this jacket is hopefully gonna keep me warm. Let's go. Decided that running is fun. I jogged like half of my walk up to now, which is like 10 minutes. Okay? This is not enjoyable. And realistically, I know it's better for me than walking. Like, it increases my heart rate. I'm moving more, well, whatever, right? I'm not built for running. I'm gonna do it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm gonna increase my pace, whatever. But, dear God not fun. Another issue I have with Ireland, there's no paths anywhere. Like half the roads actually have paths, half don't. Which is kind of annoying when I want to walk somewhere. I'm like, oh, I'll put somewhere on my map and it'll take me like a perfect length of time. No, I'm not walking on the road for all of it. So I'm gonna go somewhere else, I guess. Okay, so I think I walked most of that. It was, I think in total, like eight kilometers, maybe? I'll have to check. Uh, it was eight or six. Um, and I, yeah, I walked most of it, but I did jog a couple of times, okay? So we're working our way up and I definitely feel more tired than I normally do after I come back, like from my walks. I normally come back and I feel pretty fine but I came back and now and I'm, I wouldn't say I'm actually that red. I have been home for like a little bit and I had a drink and stuff, but I definitely feel a little more tired than I did the last time I went on a walk. So that should be a good thing, I think, but I'm gonna go have a shower. And I said I'd show you my lunch, but I'm just not feeling lunch right now. I, I probably will later just cause like it's good to eat, but I'm not feeling like having lunch i just don't feel it right now so i'm gonna go have a shower do some laundry answer some emails make some phone calls whatever boring stuff and then hopefully i should see you around dinner time So I'm currently relaxing in my bed and I'm about to get started on a book that I'll talk about in a minute. But I wanted to talk about something that did surprise me when it comes to like things that are difficult regarding weight loss. And it is living with my husband's family. And it's not for like, maybe it's not for a reason you'd expect, but when it's just my husband and I, like I'll cook our meals and I'm fine with like eating whatever that I make. And you know, I've cooked for us for the past like five years or something ridiculous. So obviously like I know how to control my diet when it comes to the food I make myself. However, 
when my husband's brother is here or it's like a weekend whatever i won't be the one to cook um mostly because there's no real need for me to you know like there's enough adults in this house who are able to cook and i don't want to you know take over that role because it's just not my job to do um but i struggle with being like no i don't want to eat this simply because it's culturally it's not really a thing that you do you know my in-laws are chinese you don't really refuse food it's considered rude or if like i want to make something separate it's just kind of considered rude and i'm i'm trying to find the balance of like eating food that is you know high in calories covered in oil a lot of carbohydrates from rice like that i'm trying to find the balance between eating that and eating my own food whilst not offending other people and it's really hard because like you know tonight i don't know what's being made tonight but i know like it'll come with a lot of carbohydrates that i don't want to eat right now because it's just not like i don't want to or it's usually like something that's been fried like stir fried um and that's a lot of excess oil that i don't want to be putting in my body but and like i have food in the fridge that i bought that i can cook but i don't want to be like oh no i don't want your food i'm gonna make my own so it is really tough and i am working on it okay i'll probably give like when i do my weight loss update in december i'll probably like slot this in somewhere but yeah it's just kind of i don't want to sound ungrateful for the fact that like we have a home where we don't have to worry about like paying rent or bills and stuff like that we do pay like our own stuff but and like obviously like people cooking for me i should be i'm i am grateful for like the effort that comes from that but it's so frustrating trying to like balance my health journey with not offending people but i don't know i'll i'm pretty new to this so i'll figure it out <laughs> i'll figure it out i guess um but i do want to talk about the book that i'm reading that is ultra processed people by chris van Tullican. I believe and I recognized this name and I was like why do I know a Chris Van something who do I know like what and him and his twin brother were on a children's TV show from the UK called Operation Out it was a long time ago but it was so good and yeah I really liked this show when it came out uh, with him and his brother um and I've been seeing people recommend this book a lot because i am trying to not only lose weight but be healthier help balance my hormones simply because i want a baby like if you follow me on any other social media you know this is like not a surprise i would like to get pregnant naturally without the use of ivf or iui or any like letrozole or clomids or anything like that this isn't like shade to people who do that i probably will have to use that but i'd rather not because it seems hard and I'd rather like do it without doing that so obviously this might not work like you know what if a couple of years down the line nothing's working I will obviously like go through medically assisted cycles or IVF or whatever but I want to help my body as much as I can so I am reading ultra processed people I don't know if it'll be good I don't like I've seen a lot of people say it is so I'm I'm gonna read it and stuff but I just want to be the like in the best possible shape. My periods and are regular, my hormones are balanced, everything. And I want to be healthy and then try to have a baby before like I don't know. I'm not gonna say any ages because like that's kinda weird to say online. But I want to be in the best kind of condition before I start trying for a baby. And like now, as much as I'd love to have a baby, my body isn't ready. Like physically I'm not ready so that's why i'm doing this journey i guess but anyway yeah that was a bit a bit personal but anyway gonna start reading and then i'm gonna see what's gonna happen for dinner i won't vlog because like everyone else is down there but i will take a picture of what i eventually do end up having for dinner and i'll share and then before i end this vlog i will show my vitamins that i'm taking and yeah i'll see you guys in a bit Okay, the day kind of got away from me there. It is now, actually it's only about 8 p.m. It's not that late, but it gets dark outside really quickly. So it definitely feels like the day has gone, but I did have my own dinner, which I was very thankful for. Uh, this is what I had. I had a 
feta pomegranate salad uh, with some meatballs, which I don't know if you'd say that's the healthiest or not, but I did avoid uh, white rice carbohydrates, so that just feels better for me. Um, I'm not saying like do avoid it, don't avoid it, this is just what feels good for me. So I'm about to take my vitamins now, and I have talked about them previously in another video, but if you haven't seen that one, this is just like what I take and why I take it, I guess. So let's start with hair, skin and nails. Uh, this one I bought in Australia and it was like $75 or something ridiculous. Pretty pricey. It was, I think it was 75 for two actually, so I, it wasn't that insane. But it was a little pricey and I take these ones because PCOS does cause hair loss and acne and all that fun stuff. So my skin is not the greatest, but it's definitely been worse at different periods of my life, so I'm fine with how it looks now. And my hair is... it's fine, like... There are areas where it's kind of thinning, but that's because I wore it in a bun for like all of my life at this point. So I think that a lot of that is like traction alopecia, but my hair itself is quite thick, so I don't have any issues with that. This is the vitamin D I take. It is... A thousand IU. I have no idea what IU is. I need to actually know what I'm taking. But it's pretty high strength uh, vitamin D, I believe. And I got vitamin D deficiency in Australia. One of, like famously very sunny. And yeah, so now we moved to Ireland. I have to just be really consistent with taking this just because I don't want to get back to that health issue. And apparently, a lot of women with PCOS have vitamin D deficiency. Not entirely sure why, but that, that is what it is. Inositol. Apparently great for people with PCOS. Apparently, some people will take Mayo Inositol, and I just don't. This is the one I take because it's easiest to find, and it's really cheap actually. Like, the amount it is, it's pretty good, and I've been taking it for, I think, about a week or so now. I've had no complaints with it, so. That's good. And then, what is this? Oh yeah, this is the hormone balance one. And this contains magnesium, inositol, vitamin C, COQ10, zinc, vitamin B6, folic acid, chromium, chromium, and vitamin D3. So it's great. This brand actually, okay. This brand has actually been really nice. Like I had some issues with my shipping. They fixed it all really quickly, so. I have no issues with this, and when my other stuff goes out, I'm probably gonna order from them again. So that's what I take. I am gonna increase the amount next year, but not at the moment, because there's no need to like add on when I just started taking these, but that's what I'm taking right now. And my husband is also taking an extra few vitamins and just improving my health. So I'm gonna go sleep, try and sleep around 10, 11-ish. And I wake up at seven, so it gives me a good like eight, nine hours sleep. So I'm really, really trying to improve myself, be a better version of me and, you know, get to the best shape that I can before, you know, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> um, but I hope this video was either interesting or insightful or educational or whatever it was for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And if, if you would like to see more videos relating to PCOS and weight loss, please do be sure to let me know in the comments so I can add those to my list. And either way, I will see you next week with a brand new video. Bye-bye for now.